My name is Harvey, Coach Harvey. Uh, it's the Baltimore Bombers. Yeah, the Baltimore Bombers used to call it. Coach a lot of guys. Um, pretty much everybody up until 2004. Uh, and then came back, uh, helped develop a lot of guys um, in the last six years. So, so what's up, Tez? What you got? Listen, what I got is, uh, I don't need you to talk my eyes or nothing like that. Because yeah. this is your floor today. Okay. However, but I'm going to ask you a couple questions first. Where are you from? Well, everybody think I'm from West Baltimore, but actually I'm from East Baltimore. Vincent, Vincent Barry, he would, you know, he would tell the whole world, like, I'm from East Baltimore. Because I actually grew up in Douglas Courts. A lot of people don't know that. My first real basketball game was actually in Douglas Courts. Yeah, that's where I was born. Okay. Yeah, that's where I was born. Okay. Yeah, my first best friend was, was from, from Douglas. You know, I lived in 2204 Mid Court. Now that's crazy because I did. I, now I, I thought you was West Baltimore. <laughs> I, I I'm was 39. You, yeah, born and raised <laughs> West Baltimore. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, and then I then I moved in that moved over Lexington Terrace, did some time, a little time in Murphy Homes, Emerson Village. You know, pretty Poplar Grove. So I'm pretty much everywhere. That's why they come, man. He he, West Baltimore, y'all. Don't let it, don't get, <laughs> don't get it twisted. This West Baltimore right here. That's West Baltimore. Is fine. My, Sean Crockett and Sean Battle and late great my man R.P. Arthur and, and Alex Man, you know what I mean? Vincent, they ain't gonna let you tell you that. They ain't gonna, they ain't gonna, they ain't gonna let you say that, but they can't. <laughs> you know, West Baltimore is where I was growing up. You know, definitely spent. I moved from um, over east when I was ten. Okay. And went to west, and um, and then um, you know I've been there pretty much since then. You no, know, did you play any, any sport? Yeah, I actually played football. Um, at Lake. Was you good? Yeah, we won two, we won, we won the state, we won the B League championship. Mm -hmm. um, got a band on the wall, Lake. Okay. All right. Started, won the JV championship, 10th grade. So I played two years of varsity. Um, had Scott, had looks and stuff like that. Then actually, I played basketball. A lot of people don't oh, know I played at Cakesville Community College. No. Yeah. And my man Marvin was a backcourt. Uh, you know, Marvin, I think his name is either Marvin Moon, Marvin, um, uh, my man, uh, uh, Stephen Marvin. Okay. The man with the backcourt. Uh, yeah. yeah. At Kingsville Community College for a year. <laughs> See, a lot of people didn't know that. No, I didn't know you played. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know you played. Yeah. We need the love of the game like that, though. Because before I let you just go ahead, like, hey, listen here, y'all. Listen, let me tell y'all this. This man that took a lot of people off the streets. The shoulder different things. I'm talking about this goes over 20 something years. You know what I'm saying? And he just didn't start this. 27. You know what I'm saying? Say it one more time. Get 27 years. 27. You know what I'm saying? That's that's a whole lot of time. If you really don't care, if you just in the shit, you you ain't gonna last that long. You ain't gonna last that long. Yeah. Where that love come from? Well, actually, um, I just love kids. Mm -hmm. So so for me, basketball was not basketball was just a vehicle to get them to the kids that I saw that was like me. Um, it's funny because Weasel, uh, mm -hmm. Robert Grant, he was down Bentlow and uh, Reggie Johnson. Mm -hmm. My little brother was playing down Bentlow and back then Herman stopped coaching once they got the, Keep up. Yeah, once they got the 14, 14 under, they, you know what I mean, Herman, Herman wouldn't coach no longer. So, so we wanted to take the kids to a tournament, and um, and they, the sponsor didn't come through. So once the sponsor didn't come through, and my little brother came home, was like, "Man, we supposed to go out of town for one of this tournament, but uh, you know, what I mean, you know, the sponsorship didn't come through." So I got in touch with Coach Weasel, and I was like, "Weas, you know, what I mean, what you think we're gonna need?" To, to get out of town. Mm -hmm. So he said, man, you know, we need about trying to get like 10,000 to get something like that. So I said, all right, don't worry about it. Let's go. So he said, for real? I said, yeah. Tell the kids, pack the things, man. We out. So we get, we go over to BCI. It was a Nike tournament back then. They had Steven Jackson. They had uh, Mike Bibby. They had um, the Riverside team. They had everybody that was somebody. Tennessee Travelers. They yeah. had everybody that was somebody back then. At this tournament, so so he was like, you know, yeah, I want to take the kids out there. So I said, all right, you know, what I mean, tell the kids pack their bags, we out, yeah, right. 
So the kids, I swear, man, they come with pantry fried bags, supermarket bags, they had their clothes in supermarket bags, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> but they, they had their shoes wrapped around it, tied together, wrapped around their shoulders. They were ready, though. They were ready to rock, right? Yeah. Tay Webb, you know I me, mean? that's my man. Shout out to T Webb, too. Yeah, that's my guy. Kiss right? off the glass. That's my man. Charles Buckley, he used to have his picture, Charles Buckley, underneath the bench, everywhere yeah. he go, right? So, um, so. So we go, I go pick up Tay Webb, tell you a funny story. I go pick up Tay Webb and I say, um, and, and I pull up at his door and I say, come on out here. He said, all right, coach. So he come out the door and he say, coach, um, he say, how we getting there? Mm -hmm. How we getting to Arizona? I said, we flying. He said, he said, like they got metal detectors. And I, I said, yeah, Tay, they got metal detectors. He said, oh, all right, hold up coach. So he go back in the house and, uh, and, and he put his gun up, right? Mm -hmm. So then, so then he then he come back out the door, and we we getting in in the line. I got all the kids in the line going through the metal detector. Tay Webb looking around, looking all suspicious. So I go back to one of the kids. I said, "Man, tell Tay Webb come here, man." So I say, "Tay, what's up, man? Why are you looking nervous, man?" He said, "You think this knife gonna go go off when I go through the metal detector?" <laughs> I said, "Yeah, Tay, man, they gonna lock you up, man. Tay, you can't take no knife." You know, metal detective, man. Come on, man. Put the knife in the bed, man. <laughs> <laughs> so Tay, Tay said, Coach, man, I got, I love you, man, man. I, I, I gotta trust you, man. I said, Tay, listen, man. We, we, we a, we a family, man. So when we go out here, anything you get into, we into. So, so Tay said, all right. So he put his knife up, get, get on the plane, and he go out here have a fabulous tournament. You uh -huh. know? And um, and it was the first time he ever been on a plane. A lot, most of them, not all of them. Uh -huh. And um, and so we get out to the airport, and I'm 21 years old. All right. You, at this time, you're 21 years old. I'm 21. Just had birthday. I actually I was 20. I had my birthday in Arizona that summer. Uh, hold up, before we let it. You see the mentality. At at 21 years old. At, at 21 years old, I was looking real stupid shit. Yeah. You was you was. I think that's kind of like the difference in men. Yeah. You see the same different. The, 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 right now, they don't have no responsibility. Yeah, our kids. You're right. You know what I'm saying? Right. We had, you had a lot of responsibility at that age. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, but salute you, though. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, salute you. Yeah, so I was 20 years old when we, when we got on that flight. So when we got, when we get, we get on the flight. Um, I had, now I was coaching the kids at Henry Park. Because mm -hmm. I was the first one to ever have a DJ in the park. Like you said, Miss Tony from the Nerds Park. Yeah. And we have a we have a cookout, I bring out food and entertainment for the kids. And and that's how Lenhurst Park got blown up. Mm -hmm. Because shout out to Mr. Banks, you know what I mean? Really for our community. You know, did a lot for a lot of kids and a lot of people. I wanna shout out to Mr. Banks. And um and he and shout out to Buckshots too. His son Banks. Yeah, Lord Banks. That's, Lord Banks holding it down. It's my family, yeah. Mm -hmm. So so yeah, but yeah, we I had Lenhurst jerseys. Mm -hmm. So so you know in the park people cut their jerseys, sleeves off, you know. Be the one be the one off. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. So so I had told the kids to take their jerseys just in case the tournament don't give us jerseys. Okay. Because I'm thinking the registration fee you get will give us at least shirts. Okay. Right? And I thought it was like hooping in the park. Yeah. But when we get out there, man, I see kids out there with uniforms and warm up uniform. Yeah, Riverside Church that had, you know, the Jordan brand back then. And it was it, I, I'm looking at my kid, my kids coming out there, they got their tennis shoes wrapped around their neck, they got their pantry pride bags, supermarket bags. I'm like, man, we looking crazy, right? <laughs> yeah. So the so the man, the man who ran the tournament, he was like, um, you got jerseys, like home and away jerseys? Uh -huh. I said, you mean tell me we need two jerseys? He said, yeah. I said, nah, man, we ain't got nothing like that. You know, he said, well, um, well, do you got anything with numbers on it? Mm -hmm. I said, yeah. So I told the kids, man, give me their numbers from the Lenhurst jerseys. Okay. Right? So, and then they had BCI shorts that was over in the stand. Uh -huh. I told them, go over there and get yourself some shorts. Everybody get their own size. Yeah. Right? Then I took the kids out to the mall and get us some sneakers and make sure that we got on the same sneakers, right? And then uh, then it was time to bump. So you made yeah. it work, man. Yeah, it made it work. But mind you, we didn't have a van, so when we got to the, when we got off the airport. <laughs> Is y'all listening to this, sir? Is y'all listening to this? Go ahead. When we got off the van, when we got off the plane, we had no van. 
So so I, I call a guy who went to tournament, I say, man, you gonna pick us up from the airport? He said, no, you gotta have, you gotta have your own van. Right? I said, we gotta have our own ride, man. Y'all ain't doing nothing, man, for all this money. I just spent a thousand dollars for this entry fee, man. He said, man, look, like get here to the venue and then we'll work out something. I said, all right. So it was limousines out front. Okay. Right? Out front the airport. No, no, you didn't. Yes, we did. No, you yeah, didn't. you asked it, yeah. That's how we did it. Yeah. And and we was cranking tails. We was, I had sunroofs open and we had Biggie going down Mills Boulevard. And I'm hanging, I'm 20 years old. I'm hanging out the sunroof with the kids. <laughs> <laughs> and we cranking, and we cranking Biggie, Biggie, give me one more chance. We got mob deep in the other one. <laughs> Yeah. This Baltimore. This is, <laughs> he made it work. This state Baltimore right here. This state Baltimore right here. Yeah. That is crazy. Yeah. Man, man, listen. I, 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 listen, I know y'all want me to ask. We're going to ask, but I don't know. This this is the beginning of when he's going out. Yeah. When, when he's taking the team out. So when we don't know this is the time when your ass live, you ain't going to eat. That's right. Blood we've been waiting for me to ask that. That's right. Blood and meat, you don't win, you don't eat. You know, you know how many jokes? You know how many jokes we had over motherfuckers like, oh, oh, you must say do nothing when you went. Man, he was tripping. No, that mean you ain't do nothing out of time. That's right, yeah. <laughs> man. See, see, listen, man, I'll I tell you like this. Because, see, when we came, the way I was raised and when we came up, you, you know, you played this game for blood and meat. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Now kids playing because it's cool. You know what I mean? This this game was so serious that the kids, this was, we understood as adults. This is an opportunity for you to get a scholarship. Right. That's how serious it was. Right. Now it's recreation for a lot of kids. It's a means to get out the house. But back then, kid, it was about saving kids' lives. Right. And, and you getting this opportunity to play against this guy that they say is better than you. Right. And you have an opportunity to show the world that, nah, you ain't never heard about me, but you're going to know me now. Right. So, so for me, it was personal. Today is still personal. Yeah. You know, I'm considered a throwback. You know, a lot of kids, you know, that don't really want it, mm -hmm. can't relate to me. Hold up, we can get that. Yeah, we can get that. Yeah. But before before we get that, can you tell the people the players that 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 that, that you coach and some of the players that you've been around, coaches. You right. know what I'm saying? And some of the things that you've learned. Uh, through the way, see, see how you started, yeah. and to be like now, yeah. and the relationships and things like yeah. that. Just, just tell the people, uh, yeah. Man, I mean, the first tournament we went to, like I say, was BCI. We wound up losing the first two games, and I, I ain't feed the kids. They was robbing the vending machine. <laughs> if you hear me, that Baltimore, them little suckers was in the vending machines. You, was, you know, they like, I said, listen, you need y'all play. Y'all get to eat anywhere y'all want. Yeah. You know what I mean? Steak if you want steak. Yeah. You know what I mean? So when they understood that it was serious, it wasn't a game. Reginald Johnson, Carlos Pearson, um, Gray, um, uh, uh, um, uh, Big Van, God mm -hmm. rest his soul, RIP to Big Van, um, Kid Key Van, um, Big Cool. Let me ask you something. Did you, did you coach Big Charlie from up Floyd Park? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. my man from Paris. Yeah, that's like, my man. People listen, people. Y'all don't, don't speak on Big Charlie yeah. from up uh, Forest Park, right? Yeah. Now he was a big, he was a big boy that he give you inside, outside. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah he was he was tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was yeah. crazy. Did, yeah. you, did you coach him? I had him. I had him for. But see, Charles was in between. Back then, it was you know, it was in between the streets. And playing basketball because again, I I can understand it because I was the same way in high school. You know, what I mean, I could have I could have really did a lot. I played baseball too in high school. I could switch hitting everything. Exactly. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, I played it all. And um and then um so I can understand because a lot of times instead of going to practice, I had to go to probation. Okay. You know, in high school. So you know, I mean, times was different. My mother got shot when I was ten. You know, paralyzed. Mm -hmm. so my father OD when I was 21. Mm -hmm. Actually, when I was in the tournament, that first tournament, my father passed. Wow. Yeah. So, so it was a, it was a, the era was different. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it was about, you know, so, but Charles was was definitely one I was trying to save. Okay. You know, um, and the only and the, another kid I lost was Mike Mike. You know. Yeah, I mean? love Mike Mike. Yeah. yeah. That was my man. Yeah. yeah I, I, he was played on my team too. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Actually, I got him in that JUCO. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Shout, 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 shout out to uh, R.P. to Mike Mike, man. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, listen, 
He went up southwest, he was picking up number two. Yes. He had a 45 game. But yeah. that's neither here nor there. <laughs> but I had him when he was at Emerson. Yeah. Yeah, before he got to Southwest. Yeah, all right. Yeah. So, so, but um, some of the players I coached, I actually I coached everybody. And and this is and this is the difference between now and and back when, when I first got into this thing. Because when I when I first got into it, the kids, all the great kids wanted to play with each other. Mm-hmm. It wasn't, it, and it wasn't no parents. You know what I mean? Like I, you know, it might have been a, a few parents here and there, but the, but the kid and the parents just looked at it like they had to work. So, the, so the kids was really out there, just you know what I mean. Whatever positive they were doing, the parents was with it. But, but the, the, all the good kids wanted to play with each other. Right. So, so it wasn't nothing. Like I say, it wasn't nothing for me to roll the ball out there. And back then, you got Tay, you got Demond, you got KD, all in the backcourt together. You know what I mean? And and anybody know me, I was the sharpest dresser. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm gonna yeah. that stuff on. You know yeah. what I mean? Representing our city, yeah. right? And we gonna talk crazy, like we talking. I ain't, you know what I mean? I'm in one game. I was so mad. I I told the kids, man, y'all gonna let these white boys. Come up here and give us a game, and the people, and the director came and said, "Man, you can't, can't keep saying no white boys." I said, "What you want me to describe, man? You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? And, uh, <laughs> let, me, let me tell you a little side note. A little side note, right? We in, uh, I think we in the tournament down in Kansas. Yeah. This one had uh, Cody on Young and That's right, Miles and Piggy and Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, 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 all right. Big fun. Yeah. yeah but y'all was in the game. I don't know. What was y'all playing? We played right at the yard. Yeah. But y'all was in the game. The mom was cooking. Yeah. The mom was cooking. The mom was doing what he could do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like them two was basically trying to carry the whole shit. Yeah. Y'all lost whatever, right? Yeah. You just sit like this. Yo, come over here. Come, like, like, come, come on over here. I said, these niggas ain't gonna eat the day. <laughs> these niggas ain't gonna eat the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, but but, but the, I'm like. But the tournament was so thick, though. Yeah. I'm like, man, they can't get the cheese sandwich, though, because these motherfuckers, they playing against the best of the best anyway. Yeah. But, but, I, but I, again, like I said, I, I felt, see, I can take a loss, mm-hmm. but I can't take a, I, I can't take an L when we don't put forth our best or we're giving out too much respect to somebody. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, no, nah, they laced the thing up. And see, my, my thing is, again, I'm building, I was building men. Yeah. You understand? So, so a man, a man makes another man show him. Don't don't I don't care about no name. I don't care what somebody else said you did. Yo, put that thing on the show. Put it on me. Right. You know, so so and all my kids to the day, they'll tell you that man, that you changed my life. So cause I I've had a I've been in this so long now where I can see when my kids had kids mm-hmm. and the way they fought and okay. the way they men in their household, the way they, you know, take care of their responsibilities. You know what I mean? So so now they get to see all the energy that it took for me to pour out of them to be men and hold them accountable. Right. So so the part of not not eating was was based off of, you know, this this is this is how you feed your family. Mm-hmm. You know, you go out there and you put your work in. So so yeah, but I tell you when them jokers you know I mean we did a lot of winning too. So, you know what I mean, we ate at all the restaurants, I'm talking about they picked it. You know what I mean, and, and, and we and we had a good time. I, you know, I would take my kids to amusement parks. I would, you know, like it wasn't about basketball for me. It was, you know, we go to the movies. You know, like we the whole the family. Yeah, we got when I got them out. I used to leave. Actually, I used to sleep with my door open in the hotel all night, so the kids, whenever they wanted to come through, a holler at me. See, that's and love. We could sit down and talk. See, that's love. Now I ain't, I ain't, I ain't gonna lie. Back then, I ain't know you was. I just was hard, and I ain't gonna lie. This motherfucker made. He ain't gonna play. The motherfucker just lay up here on their ass. You know what I'm saying? But, but no, but what I'm saying, what I'm saying, this is tough love. Yeah. Because you want the best for him. Yeah. You just want to play hard on, on the court, but you don't leave him more off the court. See, and that's the difference. Mm-hmm. And see, that's why today, today, the kids are responding to the coaching different. Mm-hmm. They like on it. Let's talk about that. Well, see, to, see, when I was coming up, the kids, the kids were harder. The kids were tougher than they are now, mm-hmm. right? But, but the coaches, Bucky Lee's, mm-hmm. right? Uh, Squirrel, mm-hmm. um, 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 Coach uh, uh, 
William Wells. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? All all these, you know, all every coach that I could think of at that time. Mm -hmm. It was more about off the court than before you get on the court, yeah. right? Uh, Murdoch, you know what I mean? Like these these coaches, all these guys, you know what I mean? They want, you know what I mean? We put the time in with the kids. Mm -hmm. So so when you saw me yelling at Taz mm -hmm. and Taz like, oh all right, Carl, you know Miss Cool, I got you. That's because I already gave him a hug. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? I already fed him. I already spent time with him. I already talked to his mother, you know what I mean, about how we're going to fix situations. Right. You know what I mean? How we're going to work. He understand I got his best interest at heart. Right. You understand? So so now, like I say, today, the coaches is just, you know, like they don't pick no kids up. You get there, you get there, you know what I mean? And, and it ain't a whole lot of personal time off the court spent with these kids. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times now, because the kids got parents. Okay. You know, see, back then, you know, the crack that just hit, you know, so the kids, you know, didn't have parents, you know what I mean, that was involved in their sports. Right. They, you know what I mean? They was out trying to make a living, trying right. to feed their kids, you know? Right. So, so, you know, a lot of them didn't have fathers in the house. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and then you got to remember, I was only a few years older than them, too. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> I'm 20, 20, you know, I'm in my mid 20s. Right. So, a lot of them, I'm six, seven years, I'm more like a big brother to them. Mm -hmm. But I ain't playing no games. No, nah, you know and, they, and they, they, they give you that respect that, like, yeah. I ain't seen no, you had a respect as a, as a coach, yeah. as a father. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Ain't, yeah. ain't nothing I'm playing with you. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Well, I also, too, though, is back back then, I was, a, I was a whole lot, I was a whole lot rougher outside, too. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So, so they knew the reputation coming from the street, mm -hmm. you know, and they seen the respect that I got from the street, right. you know, and I could go and search, certain, certain, like, like it was times when Mark be on the, on the corner, mm -hmm. two o'clock in the morning, I get a phone call, you know, hey, yo, uh, uh, Mark outside, yeah, right, and I get out my bed and I go down there at two o'clock in the morning and grab his ass up and say, come on, man, you know what I mean, get up, you know what I mean, going back in the house, That's right. you know what I mean, or you coming out, out the house with me. Yeah, you know, so you know because again, for him being a young and and, and they understood, and that's the difference too. Back mm -hmm. then, the, the guys in the neighborhood knew this guy was the one that was gonna represent our neighborhood. So we don't want no harm to come to him. Mm -hmm. You understand? It wasn't no put no pack in his hand. It was, hey man, hog uh, mark mark out here, right? You know, or I, you know, the mom be sitting in there in 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 Robert C. Marshall, and he you know he ain't going to school, and I get a phone call. You know, hey, uh, uh, I ain't seen your mom even get on the bus. Now, now, before, because I got, I got, I got a question right before we, with the coaching, mm. and um, we gonna get into that. As far as I heard a little rumbling about the seventeen, how good you, you supposed to head coach. Yeah. You know, but you have mentioned the mom, yeah. right? And I look at the that the mom was like your baby. Yeah, that was my son. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. When when he hit the scene up Ramstown, and I'm I, and I, and I'm mad he even broke his his, his hand that that same year. Yeah, that exactly. shit was about to be yeah. That shit was about to be real ugly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But talk to the people about that about that about that relationship because Demar came on. on Demar had his trials and trials, and then once he got on track with that basketball, yeah, he went. He was gone, and, and see, Demar was a, was a. One day I'm in I'm in Rob, I'm in Rob Marshall Hoop. So, you know, we used to have like the little kids and you had the older guys playing. The mom and Truck, actually. There's a little kid down there on the project named Truck. Truck was actually better than the mom when 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 I first saw them too. That's crazy. Yeah, Truck was an animal. And anybody that was doing that time knew about Truck. Truck was a was a gangster on the court, right? The mom was more zip zip. Truck was straight get a bucket. Okay. Right? So when I seen them through after the game, at the playing when I said, man, y'all, man, how high school y'all go to? Yeah. And both of them was like in the eighth or ninth grade and they had stopped going to school. Okay. So so they was like, man, we ain't, we ain't in no high school. We ain't playing. You know what I mean? I said, what? So I said, all right, let me get y'all numbers. So I got they, both their numbers mm -hmm. and I took them up Emerson. Okay. Right? You and took them up Emerson first? I took them up Emerson first. Yeah, that was going to be the school they was both going to go to. Uh, and back back then you had Eddie Colvin, you had Danny Dixon, you had all you had yeah, Virgil, Virgil, Virgil Singletary, yeah. yeah. You see me saying I was gonna put them on the squad with them, right? So so when we get up to Emerson, um, I'm trying to get them in school. Truck birthday was Truck was a year older than Demar. Okay. By his birthday, his birthday was happening before, so I couldn't get him in school. 
I had to, had to work another way to try to get him in school. Mm -hmm. But by this time, the mom was working, the family started working and got him in Randallstown. Okay. So that's how he ended up in Randallstown. So when, when he was like, I'm going out around town, I was like, oh, that's, that's even better for you, mm -hmm. right? So Get out of the city. Get out of the city, right. So now, now I'll tell you, I don't know how many parent teachers meetings I had to go to Pete, to, to talk to DeMond teachers and the principal. Yeah. Because DeMond went up there, man. And when I tell you, the county had never seen nothing like this child, right? He would go to school with polo shirts on, with long sleeves, long johns, with long john shorts, with shorts on, with long johns and Tim's, right? Yeah. And and had his goals in his mouth, and all the little girls up there was going crazy, <laughs> right? Yeah. So so, and then he had when I, when we first went up there, all the kids were wearing regular clothes. Right. Before, by the time basketball season had come, the whole school was wearing short sets <laughs> with long johns and Tim's. He had. He had thugged out. Straight ball ball. Yeah, he had straight project the <laughs> whole county. You hear me? So hey, hey, look, I, hey, look, I'd have heard some Demar. If you talk to Demar, he'd tell you some uh, random story. Oh, you know man. what I'm saying? So, yeah. I mean, it was it was unbelievable. So so then it was his grades, right? Mm -hmm. Getting it, getting his getting his grades and his schoolwork and all that kind of stuff together, right? Right. And um and 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 he was smart. Like I mean, this this boy could learn anything, and if he was, and if he didn't didn't know it, he was he was smart enough to, to get the right people to, to help him, right? Right. So he wound up getting his grades together, you know. He wound up putting the work in on the court. I mean, at you know, the, what they didn't understand is that we stayed in the lab, we yeah. stayed in the gym. You understand? And then back then, I played all my kids up. You know what I mean? So we didn't. Now kids play down. If you're 15 and you're nice. You play against thirteen year olds, right? Right. See, when we when I when I was grooming these kids, you know, I mean, you fifteen, you play against adults. Yeah. Right. You, I'm taking you in a park. You know what I mean? We hooping against grown men because that's how the Rudy Archers and all of them, like they were seasoning my kids. We would go and play copping. You know what I mean? I was I was scheduled. I would pay the guys from copping to scrimmage my kids. Damn, I didn't yeah. know you was doing it. But yeah. you, so you was basically yeah. just getting them prepared. Yeah, yeah. Because outside looking in, we just thought y'all was, uh, y'all practicing a couple times together. That's no, how to go. No, no. Okay. No, we was in the lab, man. Shout out to Lil Mookie. That's why I love Lil Mookie. Yeah, shout out Mookie. Yeah, Mookie. Shorty serious. He the closest thing I see to me. Because he did it his own way. Yeah. And, and he ain't take no handout. No. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mookie's over there. Boy, I'm Shout out Mookie. Yeah. And his, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. His, his whole trajectory. Yeah, yeah, but even with that, with the basketball, yeah. he was over there. I mean, you had what's told over there with him. But he was basically like, he was over there basically like by himself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, no, Dante, no disrespect to you. Uh -huh. But far as doing some scoring shit, he uh -huh. was over there by himself. And then AU, AU, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was like, I, you see Mookie was killing everybody during the season. Mm -hmm. But you like, all right, where you gonna get that push mm -hmm. for the summer or to get seen other places? Mm -hmm. You see him traveling, like he said one time to me, like, I suppose it went up to Calvin Hall. I think it was Calvin Hall, but they couldn't, they, it was the, the, the ride situation. Mm. So he had to stay at Forest Park, but yeah. yeah I, I, uh, what, year, what year is it you go to hospital? Maybe I was gone. It was uh, 90, we came in again, 96 to 99. 95, 95 to 99. Yeah, see, I didn't even see him in high school. Yeah. You know what I mean? I didn't even know he, I didn't, I didn't even know, I ain't, I, you know, back then, like I say, it was, the guards was, you know, the KBs and all them kind of guys, right? Mm -hmm. So I didn't even get a check, chance to check show y'all, but, but, but the passion and, and, and the love that he had for the kids, mm -hmm. right? When I see that, he inspired me. Yeah. You know, like, you know, when you look at young guys, and you see somebody that's actually doing doing it right when it comes down to the kids. Mm -hmm. You know, we sure they got a lot of. I respect his. I, I, I respect his grind. Hell yeah. He reminds me a lot of myself. You know, but um, but yeah. I, you Hold know, up. Like, let's get it. Let's get into the seventeen under the. I mean, the chatter that we. Oh yeah. Let's, let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, that was interesting because see, when I when I first came back around, um, GD, mm -hmm. which is like you know that's like one of my sons too. That's my guy. You mm -hmm. know. Um, <clears throat> GD asked me to post a 15 Okay. for BBC. So I was a little offended because, you know, I had had my own program, mm -hmm. right? And I, looking at the coaches that he had, I just didn't feel comfortable 
that they would. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't believe it. Just TV. Just talk hard. Yeah, I, I just talk hard. I just didn't feel like these guys really knew how to get the best out of the kids, you know, and was and and, and could elevate the kids the way I felt like I could, right? Mm -hmm. But he said, you know, I want you to coach the fifteen. So, you know, and I had the year before that I was coaching the fifteens, and I wanted to take them to Vegas and everything. We went to Vegas, um, and then um, and then when GD got the deal. Um, he asked me to coach the 15s. I was like, all right, cool. So, so Mookie had asked Nut to coach the 17s, okay, right? But Sean, T but Nut was, was back and forwards, you know what I mean? He was doing his training thing, and he was like, no, nah, I think Harvey would be better for it, mm -hmm. right? So, so when Nut called me up and was like, man, look, I need you know, I want you to coach the 17s over with, with Mookie. I said, ah, well, I just started, you know what I mean, coaching, you know what I mean, I agreed to do it with GD. He said, no, nah, man, like, like, come on over here, him and stay. Like, right. like you do this, this will be better for you. Right. And we trying to get, you know, we want Nut, because Nut got asked the to be a college coach. Yeah, so, and he will. Yeah, he will, yeah, absolutely. So, so I said, okay, Nut, you want to roll with me? He said, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was the plan. And then I had, I had a little, I had figured out my whole vision for the thing was I wanted to I wanted to um, coach the 17s, mm -hmm. but also with the program because Under Armour is, is a, a locally based team. I wanted to go and talk to the upper echelon uh, under, uh, uh, under Armour and see if I can't get a male mentoring program with where each kid in our program has one mentor in in the corporate world. Okay. Right. Okay. So so. That was my vision for the pro for for what I want to do for seventeens. Mm -hmm. Make sure that they had suit and ties on, going to football world, and then they had the basketball as a backdrop, right? You, you, see, listen, yeah. he, 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 he always thinking, hey, he been doing this. Remember, he started when he was twenty one, yeah. and see what he's saying. Like, I ain't hear this. I ain't, this, this is different plan. Yeah, I want a seven. Yeah. They ain't saying this. I want seventeen. We gonna we gonna we gonna put up in. A, but we won't get him. We won't get them started in the business world now, so we'll, so it won't be so, so so crazy five or ten years from now. Yeah. I mean, from now. Reason why I say that, listen. When it, when the ball stops, right. the, the, the the transition is difficult for some. Everybody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah I, I won. So if we are already trying to put that into them now, that shit is big. Yeah. You know what? So because I wanted to go to be able to go to the parents and say, look. I know you can play for Adidas. I know you can play for the Nike team with Melo, right? But can't nobody offer what we can offer as far as having where kids got relationships outside of basketball that's going to actually take them further than basketball probably would most of them, right? Okay. So that was my vision for it. So so when Mookie, so when I sat down with Mookie, he was like, you know, this is what, you know what I mean? I want you to do, I want you to coach the 17s. I'm like, all right, cool. So I go, so me and Mookie goes up to, to a high school. I forget where we went to see a kid. And then he had a guy that's my man that's over at, with um, Mount Zion. He was going to be the, the recruiting coordinator and deal with all of the schools and all that. So we had that in place, right? Mm -hmm. And then a week later, he said, man, I want you, let's go to math. I want to introduce this coach. He's going to be assistant coach with you, okay. right? He got kids. Right, so I said, okay, that's cool, you know. So we go up there, we meet the guy, right, and and I see the guy going around the room, talking to to my man, the take the takeover guys and all that, mm -hmm. and I I see him, you know, me working, you know me. So when I, when me and him, he introduced me, you know, me and the guy was talking about, I bring the kids up to you, a couple of days out of the week. You bring the kids down, your kids down to us a couple times a week right. so we can get this team to jail, right? Mm -hmm. So he was like, all right, cool, right? So then I started hearing through the grapevine that this guy's now going to be the head coach, mm -hmm. right? So now I'm like, nah, you know, I ain't up. Mookie, me and him had a conversation. So, you know, when I, when I, before I left, it was the social media thing wasn't around. So now I'm thinking it's just social media chat, mm -hmm. right? So, so... I ain't even called Shorty up about it because he didn't he didn't personally call me and say nothing about it. Right. Right. So so when when I'm hearing it more and more and more, and I hear from a reliable source, I, 
call, I gave him a call. Mm -hmm. You know, he said, oh, we just got, me and you got to sit down and talk, mm -hmm. right? He said, I want to get you and the guy in the room to talk, okay. right? You know, so I said, all right, that's cool. So, so before then, because I play chess, I don't play checkers, mm -hmm. right? I get I get the guy on the line with with another with another guy okay. right, from DC. Okay. Right. I get them two on the line together. Mm -hmm. But I'm on I'm on, I got my phone on mute. Okay. So my man asked him, say, yo, I I hear you great get the job down with 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 Underarm. He said, yeah, you know I'm gonna take my kids down there. You know what I mean? But eventually I'm gonna take over the program. So I'm gonna bring all the kids in. Right. Yes, uh, yeah. Go ahead. So when he says this, right. I'm 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 hearing this. I'm like, oh, okay. So that's what his, his intentions is, mm -hmm. right? So I took that person. Which you should have, because it's like you now you try to take my kids too. Well, but not only my kids, my city. Yeah. See, this right. is this is a city thing. Yeah. You understand? Like you, you know, you more concerned about what you got going on out there, not not my kids that's dying. Mm -hmm. See, my our kids dying. It's you know, I me mean, DC. They got their own issue, but their issue ain't our issue. Right. You understand what I'm saying? So. So I took that person. Mm -hmm. So, so when I go into the meeting, and and I got and I tell Nut what's going on. So Nut feeling some kind of way because I already had a situation over there with GD, right? He know GD my man, so he so he know me and GD we came on low on benefit over there because he felt like damn, but I felt like GD you got Adidas, I'm gonna be over here with Under Armour mm -hmm. and Bay I've been knowing over thirty years. Right. So now we ready to put all this together. This. This thing ran the way it's supposed to be ran. Right. Right. All that separate but equal, all that bullshit. That's the end of that. Right. We great bring the city. Do y'all do y'all hear this? Y'all hear me? Come in. Yeah. You talk to this shit this, this, this shit to my ears. Yeah. yeah. Be done. Yeah. Man, go yeah. Ahead. So 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 that was my my vision for all this, right? So when we go into the meeting, the guy, you know, you know, Mookie saying, you know, this the guy, whatever, whatever, you know, and Kirk. We, so it was me, Mookie, the guy. Kirk Lee and Kirk Lee in the meeting. Because Kirk Lee there to make sure don't nobody get fucked up. Okay. And shout out to Kirk Lee too. Yeah. Big homie, what's up? Mm -hmm. Kirk Lee there to make sure that everybody, you know what I mean? Because he know how I'm coming. He already know. He's been knowing me forever. You know what I mean? I'm talking about days when we, we go up to the coalition. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm telling him in my early 20s. Yeah. And I'm telling him, Kirk, bust the ass because we good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I mean? We got, the, we got the city with us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, so, so when we go to this, so we go to the meeting, you know, the guy saying this and that and this and that. So I say to the guy, like, you know what I mean? No, nah, I want you to say what you're really here for. Mm -hmm. So he like, you know I me, mean? what you mean? I say, you know what I mean? No, nah, like, 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 speak your, like, say what's up. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? What your true intentions is? Because he don't know I never really heard the conversation, right. right? So, so when, when he you want to be mad up? Yeah, be yeah. mad about it. That's what your intentions is, but. Also, I felt a little kind of way about with Mookie because I felt like you bring an outsider and you going against what we got going on here. Right. Right. Fuck his kids. Like our kids, we gonna we gonna make it regardless. Right. You know what I mean? So, so you know, like his his relationship, Mookie just felt like the relationship with him, with the kids that he had, would would be a great situation for for the, for this program. Mm -hmm. So you think about the program as, as it relates to wins and losses. Right. You know what I mean? I was on something completely different. I was on building a program or being a part of a program that was was city owned, right? And and, and we really changed the kids' lives. Right. You know, outside of basketball. Right. right? So and I understand he, he he he's younger. You know, he's really, he was you know he really young in this game. Right. You know, um. But so when the guy didn't say what he was saying and all this and this and that. You know, Mookie made his decision on what he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. You know, I, you know, the guy, the meeting got a little hostile, mm -hmm. right? Because I called him, he was back, like, you know, some bullshit, you know, you know what I mean? So, so, Mookie, you know what I mean, said what he said. Nut told the guy straight up and down, like, you know, Slim, you ain't, you know what I mean, that shit, you ain't going to be able to do this. Right. So when Slim came out of the office, you know, I told Slim, I said, listen, I said, Mookie can do what he want with his program. He can hide Mm -hmm. I'm just letting you know when you come outside, you might get fucked up. Yeah. I'm just letting you know because I know what your intentions are. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you know what I mean? You know, he 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 can give you the job because mm -hmm. this is his program. But you know what I mean? You ain't safe, right? So the same homeboy that he called, mm -hmm. that told that to, mm -hmm. he called the homeboy back when he left out of that meeting. 
Uh-huh. And I was on the phone again. And he said, man, them niggas in Baltimore crazy. Man, I ain't fucking with that shit. You let it go. You let it go. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, you know what I mean, while I'm not having a 17. But, you know, but I always, you know, like I say, you know, my my job is being one of the older guys in this is to really look over all, you know what I mean? You know, a lot of times behind the scenes, and Bay will tell you this, man, I, 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 I've met with Bay, mm-hmm. man, when I can eat, because again, that's my good friend, mm-hmm. right? Shout out to Bay too, man. Yeah, great. I mean, a lot of people misunderstand Bay, because, you know, he's, he's, Bay has always been the way he is. Mm-hmm. Like, he's just not a familiar friend type of guy, you know what I mean? Like, like he fuck with who he fuck with. He, but you gotta understand this though. This is Baltimore. Yeah. And this is Ted TV. We be one hundred. But yeah. uh, Bay is a, a, a metal guy. So and people man, that metal for this is this was a, 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 and I could get some people griped. I yeah. did. But you know what I'm saying? They're too successful black men right now. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Right. So at the end of the day, uh, some of that shit y'all gotta push to the side, man. Yeah. You well, know what I, I'm well, it's it's, it's kind of like one of the things when you're successful because I've I've been successful and made money and mm-hmm. you know I'm always I'm I'm God I'm blessed, right? Mm-hmm. You know the more you do, it's never enough, right? Mm-hmm. Now now I will say this I will say that I, I and me and Bay talk about this a lot. I always think that they should have done more. To bring the city together, mm-hmm. as far as all the kids. Let me ask you this though: yeah. How could he do that though? Especially when, when, I, when you have kids that that's going, that's that's got lines to this coach, that coach, that coach. No, you ain't no lines. See, and that's the thing. See, iron shop and iron. Mm-hmm. See, I, I tell you one day, one day, and this how this how this how this why I respect duty so much, right? One day, y'all, I don't know if he was on that team, but I think it was um, it was. Uh, Rocky, Parrish. That was that. That was that to me. That was that to you. Yeah, that was okay. That. And and Rudy Gay and all them, yeah. right? That's probably two thousand one, two thousand two. Something like that, yeah. right? So so a college coach told me that he was coming in town. He was going to be over at Cecil Rec, mm-hmm. right? Which they had moved to practice because there were so many coaches that was going to be at Lake Clifton, okay. right? So I get all my kids together. We had Walbo practicing. I said, "Come on, y'all! I got cars outside." We going over late, right? Right? They say for what? I said we gonna scream at Cecil today. Yeah. Judy didn't know nothing about that. <laughs> you hear me? <laughs> yeah. I knocked on the door. I told Judy, "Hey man, y'all, y'all, y'all got college coaches over here, man. We trying to see some bump today. What's up?" Yeah. Judy said, "Come on in. Yeah. Let's yeah. get this money. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. So, so see, see, and, and that's the way it was. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, my kids could have taken a scholarship out of one of his kids' mouths. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying? But he wasn't. It wasn't about none of that. It was about. It was about the kids. Cause it's gonna come back around. And, oh, it's, it's more than nothing here. Yeah. You see, what I'm saying he got 25 coaches in there. Mm-hmm. Thanks to Duty and his kids, right? Right. And 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 he allowed my kids to come in there and showcase their talent against his kids. And I'm talking about Taz. We had a full out scrimmage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about people failing, people and everything. <laughs> it got personal in there. <laughs> and I'm coaching, he's cheap. You know what I mean? He's trapping me. You know what I mean? He running presses. You know what I mean? It was a full out game. Man, man. Because you know what? You just, now you got my brain working, right? Yeah. Because I'm hoping that, I'm hoping the plan that you got in your head, yeah. you know what I'm saying? That you'll be able to, you'll be able to, you're ready to spread that because ain't nobody talking like that. Man, listen. Now, and I understand, I understand how that 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 that, that, that contract shit go. You gotta win. win. Yeah. I understand it. You're gonna win. You're gonna win. Yeah. But that off the court shit. No, listen, man. Like I say, see, and, and I even talk. I talked to Bay one time. I said, Bay, listen. And I and I, I got Mookie and Bay on speed. Like I, I got both of them on speed dial. You understand mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Because I was trying to get it where, where we have we get a list of all the kids in the city, mm-hmm. uh, all your your top thirty, top forty kids in the city, mm-hmm. and then we sit down and say, all right, you pick a guard. Mm-hmm. We put we formulate the teams together mm-hmm. to make sure that all the teams are good, right? Mm-hmm. Then, then we make them practice against each other. So that means all the good coaches that Melo got, all the good coaches that Mookie got, all the co- coaches that BBC had. Mm-hmm. We get to, I get to tell them kids something that, they, that another coach might not be see. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? And then we all in the lab, we all in one gym, and we all, them niggas skilling and drilling together, them, they, they, they hooping against each other. It's personal. 
You understand? It's pride, mm -hmm. right? So now when we go out of town, now it's, it, you know, this is layup, it's the layup line. They running through shit. Because yeah, I, what I, I, was I, happening I, was everybody was losing. Yeah. You know what I mean? We were bad. You know, we were, you know, on the Adidas circuit, we were, GD had it going for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. But the tip, but it was all for kids that were outside the city. Okay. You understand? Like, if you look at GD teams, a lot of them kids, most of them not, like, he wasn't even fighting for it. He might get one or two of the top kids out of Baltimore, but the rest of his kids was from elsewhere. You follow me? So, okay. and then Mookie would have all the babies. Yeah. So he was just coming into the dealing with the older kids. Right. You know? And then you had Melo that was flying kids in from, you know, this place and that place and trying to put something together last minute. And it just ain't going to work no. when you got takeover that been playing against since they were 13 years old. Yeah. You know what I mean? You got 